This video, sponsored by Trugal Republic, the precious metals experts. Talk to one of their experts today about diversifying your portfolio to help assure your future financial security. Find their contact information in the description below and pinned in our first comment. James Kaufman, World News Report today. July 20th, 2024. God bless you and yours, no matter where you are in the world. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell for critical future updates. We're looking at our 4KP indexes here. They actually are a summary of any space weather that may be hitting our planet. And we see the Boulder KP index that used to be so valuable has been, well, really not working properly. It does show a geomagnetic disturbance here in the last few hours. And there is something on Discover that looks very, very strange that we'll take a look at. All the other KP indexes indicate that we've seen no space weather all day long. Jumping over to our GOES satellite and GOES X-ray flux, we see we've had two M-class solar flares today. The first one was directly Earth-facing. They are expecting a chrome mass ejection to impact Earth on the 24th per this small blast. Again, it was an M1.9 solar flare. It peaked around 7.20 UTC time, which is about 1.20 in the morning central time. Again, it did create a chrono mass ejection that is inbound according to NASA's Goodert Spiral. The only other M flare we had peaked at 1850. It was an M1.5. Now, the first M flare came from our very complex Beta Delta Gamma Sunspot 3751, which Noah warned us about. Our second M flare, a 1.5, actually peaked at 1850, but was generated by AR3744. That's one of the sunspots on our departing limb. So that might also be geo-effective per our geomagnetic connection to that limb, the Parker Spiral Geomagnetic Connection. So we might have a double whammy in store for around the 24th. But NASA models do show an impact from the first solar flare on the 24th from that directly Earth-facing very complex beta delta gamma sunspot that peaked again at about 720 UTC time or 120 last night central. All right, taking a look at those flares, here's the first one 720 UTC time, about 120 last night central. A beta delta gamma, very complex sunspot. They have it at 1.8 but it's really at 1.87 or 1.9. And the second one occurred recently and peaked about 1850. It was from our departing limb, sunspot 3744. We'll take a look at both those sunspots. It's a simple sunspot, but we do have a geomagnetic connection to that departing limb, as many of y'all know. Because of sunspot AR3751, they've raised our chance of an X-class to 10% from the measly 5% chance we had yesterday. We also have a 55% chance of M-class that should be moved up to 100% because we've already seen two today. And of course, a 99% chance of a C-class solar flare. Ladies and gentlemen, we haven't been below a strong C baseline in months. So that should always be 100%. We're currently running a C3.31 baseline. Again, the major flare of the day that did create a coronal mass ejection is M1.87 out of 3751, about 120 central time this morning. All right, taking a quick look at our sun here, HMI Intensicram 3751 is right here. It's almost joining 3761. I mean, very close to being one huge sunspot. They're both looking complex to me, and they're both directly Earth-facing. 3744 is on the limb, as I indicated, 
and we should have a decent geomagnetic connection, especially because it's in the southern hemisphere. Now, currently we only have 13 sunspot groups named that are earth facing, but you can see that there needs to be another sunspot named, so we'll call it 14. Over to our GOES solar ultraviolet imager, we see activity out of 3744, but that's going to be another flare that occurred after the M1.5 flare. It's going to be a strong C flare. We also see activity out of a sunspot here, and that sunspot's going to be AR3749, also on the departing limb, uh, but not strong enough to really affect Earth. Now we will take a look at the M1.9 flare that came from 3751. Remember, 3761 is really, really close to it and almost joining it. Over to Lasco C3, uh, we go by both time periods and don't really see anything. I guess that first flare happened right about 120 UTC time. Let's watch our clock here and you'll see but we were looking for 720 UTC 10. So there's no visible CMEs, although NASA has plotted a coronal mass ejection inbound towards Earth for the 24th, as you will soon see. All right, this is our second M flare of the day that peaked at 1850. The first one's not included in this, but everyone's getting a great dose of radiation today. This is our D region absorption prediction. And I'll tell you what, that happened right over Mexico and parts of the United States. Just to kind of give you an idea, everyone's enjoying a sea baseline and some large sea bumps in the road as we go. That is the last flare we saw come off the limb right there. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it looks like we have solar weather hitting us. I just don't see it happening anywhere. I wish I could point to something and say, hey, there's the plasma. This jumps up to 15.3 for just a few minutes here. Out of the blue, you also see it. Uh, well, the solar winds jump at the same time. They should be moving oppositely. Started the day off solar winds at 3.50 and... I will say that we had this event where solar winds went up to 500 kilometers per second and plasma went from a really baseline, let's see if we can get it over, it went from a, well, under one centimeter cubed up to around eight centimeters cubed. If I could just grab the right one here, they're not allowing me to do so, but it went up to about eight centimeters cubed, which is not even past the space where the threshold of 10 centimeters cubed. What would have caused this jump in solar winds from 350 to 500? It's all confirmed by the temperature right here. And we saw it on the Boulder Index come out as a geomagnetic disturbance where all the other indexes, I believe, have been dialed down so the public doesn't know what's occurring. Now again, our shields are up, our shields are down. This last move, we had plasma, solar winds, and temperature all confirm each other. Although we should never see plasma move with winds like they do here. Very, very strange. We will take a look at the backside of the sun and see maybe if, well, there was another source of energy. It's very, very hard to explain this. The other thing I'd like to mention is they took out all the data here. Uh, for about an hour here from both the shields and our BZGSM models here. Very strange, and I, that's why I couldn't grab it down here. They've taken the data out. But, uh, so this might have been a longer term event, but we know that it bounced super high, especially the solar winds from about 350 to 500. We got a 499 in there. 501. Bingo. What would have caused that for 20 minutes? All right, over to STO. The first influence is going to come from 
AR or 3751. This is 3751 and 3761. And the second end flare would be towards the very end of this feed. If we get it, it's going to be coming from AR3744 on the limb over here. Let's see what we can do. I do have it in slow mode. And we should see the first flare. I see activity from right about now. Oh, they took it out. That was right about when it was going to happen. And we should see the second flare coming up at 1850, which is right about, oh, they didn't go far enough. So completely took all the information away here. I'm sure the same will be true over here. Everyone tells me this is SDO eclipse season, but when I looked it up, it indicated that it was not. There's the first flare right there. And the second one was at 1850. I'm watching the time down here, and this feed doesn't go to 1850. How convenient. Now, no one is reporting this, but in October, October 2nd, 2024, we have an annular solar eclipse where we can see the edges of the sun. I don't know why this is not being reported. In 73 days, it'll happen. This matches up perfectly with I Pet Goat and then the emergence of the Antichrist. Hmm, the election. This is scary, folks. Again, we have another annular eclipse, October 2nd, 2024, 73 days from now. Scary. Now, that solar eclipse will not be visible from the United States, but in fact, it is occurring and will be visible. For much of the globe. Very, very scary. Does that make three in one year? And that one happens to be in October? That is really frightening. This is the backside of the sun here. You can see we have tons of sunspots. I'm sure many of these are our old friends coming back to visit. 017. I'm sure we'll have several named or additionally named sunspots today. It looks like we already need to name one down here. This was taken a day and a half ago. We have 023 in blue here and 024, and I'm sure that we know all of these guys. You can see how large they look on the gong down here. A big problem. Over to STO HMI magnetogram image, we see 3751 and 3761. It's all becoming one big sunspot. This was taken at 2100 hours today on the 20th so this is a very very recent photo we can see this is what well, was an unnamed sunspot although i'm sure it is named by now we'll also have one coming around the limb in the northern hemisphere and y'all saw the back side so i guess we do have about 14 sunspots earth facing currently of course you can see ar3744 departing here but that is on the departing limb where our geomagnetic connection is located. Our Parker Spiral Geomagnetic Connection, named after the actual person that figured out where our connection was to the sun. Now let me show you what that means. Everyone always wants to, well, imagine that our solar system is flat, but it's far from flat. Our sun is supposedly moving away from the Big Bang at 544,000 miles an hour. I'm sure there's several stars moving away from the Big Bang close to us at similar speeds. Earth right here is orbiting around the sun, being dragged by the sun and its geomagnetic connection to that far limb. At 67,000 miles an hour around the sun, it takes one Earth year for it to make it all the way around the sun. All the other planets are also being dragged by the sun. It seems to me that would mean that anything happening in the southern hemisphere would be more geoeffective towards any of the planets in our solar system, period. All right, this was taken at 7.06 this morning. You can see AR3744 here before it blows. And the sunspot that created the coronal mass ejection that is currently inbound. I will soon show you the NASA Goodard spiral and show you that it's a direct hit. 
Uh, I'm sure it's not going to be that powerful because this was only an M1.5. Although an M1.5 can generate a good chrome mass ejection. These are the sunspots coming around. This one's probably already named and this one will be named shortly. Now, this is NASA's Goodert is with Spiral and you can see that they've modeled that CME. It looks more of a glancing blow all of a sudden. I've just refreshed it. But you can see that CME that was ejected by AR3751 today, 1.5, does look like it's going to impact Earth around the 24th. It's going to be a double impact because we have some light plasma that's traveling very slow that's going to impact around the 24th to 25th as well. So we should look for Aurora Borealis at that time and a small solar storm of some sort. Today is the 20th, and the EESA says we're being nailed today by chrome mass ejection. Well, none of the U.S. equipment is saying the same thing. Again, they're looking for 30 centimeters of plasma cubed and solar winds. Well, starting out much higher than they really did. They started out 350, although we saw that brief time period that they went up to 500 kilometers per second for about 20 minutes. We didn't see plasma go over 8 centimeters cubed. Uh, the ESA euphoria used to be a lot better just recently at predicting things, but they have gone downhill fast. Heading over to the planetstoday.com, we see that there's really no planetary lineups whatsoever. Again, the channels or YouTube channels that spoke about a planetary lineup a week ago were off, I'll put it nicely. There hasn't been any real planetary lineups that would include the moon and the sun in quite some time, although we did have a big earthquake just a day or two ago. With that said, God bless each and every one of y'all. Remember, our solar system is not flat. I showed you the real deal, and we have another almost full Solar eclipse, a third one for the year coming up October 2nd. Very, very scary. That's exactly what happens in I Pet Goat with September and November being, well, well, another tragic event occurs during that time period, according to I Pet Goat 2. God bless you guys. Share it, subscribe. Always remember anything's possible. Bizarro world.